what links are you seeing between diet and, and, and cancer? You make a very good point. You know, there are certain things that we know can be associated very clearly with cancer development. And so smoking is one, you know, a lot of exposure to sunlight, being sunburnt is another. And of course, there's a whole raft of chemicals, asbestos, things like this, that we know um, are, cause cancer. And the reason that we know that they cause cancer is because we understand the mechanism through which those particular things drive those mutations in your DNA. So we know the component of cigarette smoke that causes mutations. We know how getting burnt and UV light causes mutations. And so we have two pieces of evidence. We have the link, the association, you know, a group of people that smoke tend to get more cancers and we know the mechanism. So then there's other kinds of lifestyle choices that have some association where we see that maybe people who eat a certain type of diet or who carry a certain type of weight have a greater association of developing some kinds of cancer. But understanding the mechanism behind that is less clear. And to my mind, as you know, a, a fundamental scientist, we need to understand the mechanism before we can be absolutely clear about what it is. Now, having said that, there are strong links between certain kinds of behaviour and developing cancer. Um, indisputably, things like endometrial cancer are strongly associated with carrying more weight, being overweight, obese. But, you know, with all of these things, the association is, is less strong than, for example, smoking and cancer. So it's probably contributing towards your likelihood of developing these diseases. But, you know, I, I think it's, it's extremely naive to say, you know, being overweight causes this type of cancer or that type of cancer. We need to be more nuanced and understand mm -hmm. much more. In my mind, if we understand why these associations happen, we're much further forward, both in being able to do something about it. But I think people understand that, you know, if you can be very confident about the cause, I think people would be more accepting that this actually probably is true. And, you know, maybe I should factor that into my life. I'm just riffing here. But I'm thinking, well, maybe if you were someone who had some kind of genetic predisposition towards being a bigger person, that might also potentially give you a genetic predisposition towards having endometrial cancer, for example. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility? All of these things are possibilities. I mean, we know that the genes that we inherit strongly influence, you know, our susceptibility to all kinds of cancers. I mean, there are people um, who have mutations in some genes that will, you know, almost certainly guarantee that they will develop cancer. Um, there are other very strongly linked um, genes and, you know, the breast cancer susceptibility mm -hmm. gene is one. I mean, not everybody who carries the, the BRCA1 or 2 gene will develop breast cancer, but the, the likelihood is much higher. And then there's all kinds of things that we inherit that have very, very tiny effects on our susceptibility. And it's a cumulative effect of all of those. It's very hard to pinpoint one or two. There are a few, like the breast cancer gene, but in general, it's this sort of, um, you know, the combination of everything that you're dealt from your mother and your father um, that come together. Then there's also an element of, you know, your lifestyle, um, things you get exposed to. And to be honest, just luck, you know, whether you happen to just by chance acquire a mutation in the wrong cell at the wrong time. So there's no blame to be associated with this.